simply to speak your name is praise hallelujah now and always forever we lift your name in praise hallelujah our god you reign simply to speak your name is praise oh let's do it again hallelujah hallelujah name above all simply to speak your name is praise hallelujah now and always forever we lift your name in praise hallelujah our god you reign simply to speak your name is praise oh our great redeemer
Good morning, church. My name is Evan, and I just want to thank you so much for joining our online service today. I'm so glad that you're here, and we hope that today is a blessing for you. Hey, I want to ask you just if you could take 30 seconds to go either to the Valleybrook app on your phone or to valleybrookchurch.org slash connect and fill out our online connection form. If this is your first time or your 50th time, we want to hear from you. There's a place where we can know how we can pray for you, any comments, encouragements you want to give, and then also some ways that you can get connected here at Valleybrook. Another way that you can get connected here at Valleybrook is our Exploring Membership class. So Pastor Nate, Pastor Travis are going to be talking about what it means to be a member at Valleybrook, what it means to be a member of God's church in general. Membership means a partnership where we work together for a common goal. And if you'd like to be in this Exploring Membership class, you can reach out to Nate at valleybrookchurch.org or reach out to Tra Pastor Travis at travis at valleybrookchurch.org. Another way for you to get connected is to join our online platform. On Facebook, every Wednesday, we do what's called a Live at Valleybrook. It's Wednesday at 10 a.m. where people join us and talk about different things, discuss different topics, doctrines, life, social things that are happening. This is just an awesome time to tune in, interact with each other online, and, and hear about what's happening at Valleybrook. And finally, what we do here at Valleybrook is only possible through your generous gifts. If you feel led to give to the mission of Valleybrook Church to, to help us move forward with ministry initiatives in our community and with families and helping those who are in need, you can give through the app or you can give through valleybrookchurch.org slash give or simply send a check through the mail. Thank you so much for your gifts. And now, tune in and enjoy this message from Pastor Nate. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Church Online. My name is Nate. I'm the associate pastor here, and it's a good day to be worshiping God with you. In the middle of last year, I received some rather exciting news. I received word that my brother-in-law was going to get married in the Philippines. Now, this was exciting for two reasons. First and foremost, I was excited for my brother-in-law and his fiancée, whom I love very much. But second, uh, I'm actually a quarter Filipino. It's part of my heritage. And so the thought of traveling to that country was thrilling to me. Well, in, in my excitement, I got right to work making travel plans. And the first thing I did in making plans is purchased plane tickets to get there. But I didn't just stop there. I didn't just think about the beginning of the trip. I thought about the middle of the trip. I looked into the different cities that we would be visiting. I, I, I looked into options for transportation. I booked a few hotels. In other words, I didn't just ask the question, what do I need to do to begin the trip? I also asked the question, what do I need to do to stay on the trip? You've ever made travel plans? You know how important both of those questions are unless you are retired and own an RV, then you wake up, brush your teeth, and just start driving somewhere. But for most of us, for many of us, both of those questions are very important. What do I need to do to begin a vacation? What do I need to do to stay on vacation? Well, today we're going to ask a very similar question. When it comes to being on mission for God's church, today we're going to ask the question, what do you need to do to stay on vacation? mission. The church today needs to stay on mission. Jesus gave us the mission to love God, to love others, to make disciples, to know and share his life-changing love, yet many, many today find that difficult. We've got restrictions with seeing people. We've got division and fighting in the church. There's distractions and discouragement daily and so the idea of staying on mission for God can feel really quite difficult. And the question, therefore, can be one of practicality. What do you need to do to stay on mission today? Well, the good news for us is that there are answers to that, questions, that question that we can see in today's Scripture Last week in Acts 13, Pastor Travis showed us what it looked like for Paul and Barnabas to begin their mission. Today in Acts 14, we're going to discover what it looked like for Paul and Barnabas to stay on mission. Specifically, we're going to hone in on their time in a city called Lystra 
and in doing so, we're going to see uh, what they did and what we can do to stay on mission. If you have a Bible, we, we are in Acts 14, and we are beginning in verse 6. The text starts this way, But they, Paul and Barnabas, found out about it and fled to the Lyconian cities of Lystra and Derbe and to the surrounding country, where they continued to preach the gospel. In Lystra, there sat a man who was lame. He had been that way from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed, and called out, Stand up on your feet. At that, the man jumped up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the Lyconian language, The gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought bulls and wreaths to the city gate because he and the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to them. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of this, they, they tore their clothes and they rushed out into the crowd shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? We too are only human like you. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things to the living God who made the heavens and the earth and the seas and everything in them. In the past, he let all nations go their own way, yet he, yet he has not left without himself without testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops for in, the, in their seasons. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your hearts with joy. Even with these words, they had difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. Okay, this was pure craziness. Paul and Barnabas preach the gospel. They miraculously, or God miraculously heals a man. And the people in the city respond by wanting to worship them. This was like new territory. This had never happened to Paul and Barnabas in previous cities. Yet through all of that craziness, Paul and Barnabas stayed on mission by staying focused on the good news of the gospel. What do you need to do to stay on mission? Number one, stay focused on the gospel. Verse 7 tells us that when Paul and Barnabas entered Lystra, they continued to preach the gospel. In fact, whenever Paul and Barnabas entered a city, what did they do? They preached the gospel. They preached the gospel when they entered Paphos, when they entered Pisidian Antioch, when they got to Iconium, when they went to Derby. Wherever they went, they stayed focused on the gospel. And that was not an easy thing to stay focused on in the city of Lystra. Because verses 8 through 10 tell us that when Paul was preaching, a man who was lame from birth, never walked, was listening. Paul somehow, by the Holy Spirit, discerned that this man had great faith, invited him to stand up for the first time in his life. He got up and, and, and miraculously walked. And what happens next was mayhem. The people thought Barnabas was the Greek god Zeus, and they thought Paul was the Greek god Hermes. Now that might seem a little weird to us, but there's actually a, 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 you know, a reason for that. You see, Lystra had a temple built to the god Zeus. They considered Zeus their patron god, in fact, local legend had it that Zeus and Hermes had once visited Lystra in human form prior to this account. So the people in Lystra are thinking that this is happening again. They're visiting us again. And so they brought the bulls from the temple into the city to sacrifice to Paul and Barnabas. They brought wreaths to, to put on, on, their, on their heads. Uh, but Paul and Barnabas kept their focus on God. Verse 14, they tore their clothes, which was a sign of sorrow. And, and, and they pleaded with the people to, to turn from the worthless idols and turn towards the living God. I mean, that's the, the a gospel message in a nutshell. They explained how God is the one behind creation, how God is the one behind the provision of the crops, and even how God is the one behind the sense of joy that they feel. I mean, Paul was doing everything he could to stay focused on the good news of the gospel, and we need to do the same 
today. If you were to uh, watch a college or professional basketball game, you will see two things when a player goes to shoot a free throw. First, you will see uh, the player take the basketball, step up to the line, and maybe dribble and focus on, start focusing on the rim. And second, you will see hundreds of crazy fans in the background waving their arms, shouting, banging on the seats, holding up signs, trying to distract the player from focusing on the hoop and making the free throw. Well, actually, you're not going to see that this year, but, you know, there's hope for next year. But, but, but the good free throw shooters, they don't focus on the crowd. They have one focus They stay focused on the back of the rim. And staying focused on the back of the rim enables them to shoot a higher percentage of free throws because they are not distracted by the crowd. So let me ask you a question. Right now in your life, are you staying focused on the rim of the good news of the gospel? Or are you just only looking around at the crowd? How easy it is, how easy it is to begin a mission thinking about focusing on God, but then end up only thinking about other people and what they're saying and what they're doing and thinking. How easy it is for us to to begin a mission thinking and focusing on the gospel, but end the mission thinking and focusing on ourselves. How many times does it happen that Christians get off mission because they lose focus on the gospel? I've experienced seasons like that in my life. Have you? Here at Valley Brook Church, we want to make much of the gospel, the gospel message that while we were still sinners, Christ Jesus died for us, the righteous for the unrighteous, that Jesus left heaven to come down and sacrifice his life for us. Hey, kids, I love to think about it this way. When we couldn't make our way to God, God made his way to us. Jesus came and died on the cross that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. The gospel message that whoever picks up their cross will will not lose their life, but rather find their life, not only in the life to come in heaven, but in the life here and now. The gospel message that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. We must stay focused on that gospel message no matter what is going on around us. Now, what I need to do here, what I need to do here is, is kind of put a parenthesis. Because I, I don't want to appear dismissive to what's going on around us. In other words, you, you could uh, look at uh, things like COVID-19 and, and people's reactions, uh, racism, the shifting landscape of sexuality, uh, the upcoming election, political decisions, stuff going on in the family. You could look at things like that and you could say, I'm just going to focus on the gospel in a way that is dismissive to real problems, real pain, real people. And I am not promoting that. We need to talk about all of those things. We need to pray about them. We need to go there and lean into those things. So what I'm not saying is that we need, that, that we, that we need to de-elevate the significance of what's going on in our lives. But what I am saying is that we need to re-elevate our focus on the gospel. And if you're kind of getting pulled on your heart right now and you're like, oh, that's me, that's me. I've I've been spending so much time and doing all these other things and looking into all this. I've been so much, and I'm not spending time in his word. Well, that's a good practical place to start. Get back in his word. 
If you haven't been reading his word, get back into reading his word. Read a chapter a day out of one of the gospel accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Read a chapter in the Old Testament, chapter in the New Testament. Get back in his word. Get your mind and your heart oriented and focused on the gospel as you do life in these days. Paul and Barnabas, they did everything that they could to keep the focus off of themselves and on to God and the good news of the gospel. What do you need to do to stay on mission? First, you need to stay focused on the gospel. Second, you need to persevere in persecution. You need to persevere in persecution. What happens next in Lystra, we see in verse 19. Then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium, which were previous cities that they were at, and won the crowd in Lystra over. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside the city, thinking he was dead. But after the disciples had gathered around him, he got up and went back into the city. The next day, he and Barnabas left for Derby. They preached the gospel in that city and won a large number of disciples. So here we see that Paul is severely persecuted, yet he perseveres. The story goes, or the, 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 the account goes, that some Jews from Antioch and Iconium traveled some hundred miles to Lystra. Some people will travel a long distance to persecute the church. They, they, they interrupted the pagan worship, and, and they turned the crowds against Paul. Crowds can be fickle, right? We, we kind of all agree on that. They can cheer you one minute, and then they can boo you the next. And the crowd here goes from worshiping Paul and Barnabas to stoning Paul. Paul. And in fact, the stoning was so severe, they think he's dead. They, they, they think he's dead. They, they drag his motionless body outside the city gates. They toss it for the birds. They, they wipe their hands and they go back to their normal lives. But Paul wasn't actually dead. Most likely, we don't know, but most likely Paul was just knocked unconscious, perhaps slowly breathing his last few breaths. But after the disciples gathered around him, God miraculously restores his health. They bring him back into the city. And after he gets a good night's sleep, he and Barnabas leave the next day, travel 60 miles to the neighboring city of Derby, preach the gospel, and make a lot of disciples. Paul persevered in persecution. And you and I, as Christians, need to do the same. In the early 20th, 20th, in the early 20th century, there was a man named er, Ernest Shackleton. And Ernest Shackleton made three expeditions to explore the South Pole. Uh, and his most famous expedition was his third, in which his goal was to cross the South Pole. This was no doubt a very dangerous journey. Well, it is said that Ernest Shackleton found his crew for this journey with an ad in the London Times. And it said that the ad went like this. Men wanted for hazardous journey, small wages, bitter cold, long months of complete darkness, constant danger, save for turn, doubtful, honor and recognition in case of success. <laughs> I mean, how about that for an ad to get people on board? Well, you know what? The ad worked. Shackleton found a crew of 27 men, and it's a good thing that he promised nothing less or nothing more than tragedy because tragedy st struck. In 1915, their large ship was engulfed by ice and Shackleton and his 27 men began a very long and difficult journey of survival back to land. The, the danger that they knew was possible became a reality. Yet when reality hit, all 27 crew members were prepared to face it head on. And, and, and the beautiful part of this story is that all 27 crew members and Shackleton made it back to land alive. Folks, listen to me. Too many Christians 
quit the mission the moment that they are persecuted because they think, I did not sign up for that. They, too many people, the moment they're persecuted, the moment they face hardships because of persecution, quit the mission of the gospel because they say, I did not sign up for that. But the truth is, whether somebody told you or not, that when you became a Christian, yeah, you did sign up for moments of persecution in your life. It was in Lystra that Paul met a young man named Timothy. Timothy would later join Paul on his second missionary journey and eventually pastor the church in Ephesus. It was later in life, while he was pastoring the church in Ephesus, that Timothy received a letter from Paul as an old man. And part of Paul's letter to Timothy read this way. You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings, what kind of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, the persecutions I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. If you live on mission for the gospel, there are going to be moments in your life where you face persecution. Doesn't mean you have to go looking for it. Doesn't mean you have to like it. It simply means you need to know up front that there will be moments in life where that happens. There may be times when people quit associating with you because of your belief. There might be times when you're called judgmental because you share the gospel message, the reality of heaven and hell. There might be times that people yell at you or, or sneer at you and there may be times when you're physically harmed because of your faith. It doesn't happen a lot in this country, but it, it happens around the world. And when those moments come in your life, my prayer for you, and I guess this would also be my prayer for myself, is that we would persevere in faith. The good news is that we don't have to do it alone. You see, God will give us the strength in those moments to persevere in faith. And, and God will also give us the support of others in those moments. And that's the third thing that you need in order to stay on mission. What you need to do in order to stay on mission, number three, you need the support of others. You need to support others and you need others to support you. Verse 20 tells us that when Paul was lying motionless in the streets of Lystra, left for the birds, the disciples gathered around him. That's significant. They, they, didn't, they didn't run away for, for fear of their own lives. They, they, didn't, they didn't flee and say, I don't want that to be me. They, no, they gathered around him. They, they most likely prayed over him, even in the most turbulent time of their Christian life. They supported Paul. And, 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 and Paul and Barnabas did the exact same thing for them. You, you see, after spending time in, in the neighboring city of Derby, here's what Paul and Barnabas did. Let's look at verse 21. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church. This right here, folks, is an incredible act of support on behalf of Paul and Barnabas. And, and let me show you a map of the region to explain why. If you look at a map, the city of Derby, which is where they were, 
was a hop, skip, and jump away from, from Paul's hometown of Tarsus and their home church in Syrian Antioch. This would have been an easy land route home. Paul could have so easily said, you, you know what, Barney, uh, Barnabas, B Barney, uh, <laughs> we, we've been through enough, let's go home. Uh, but, but that's not what happened. Paul and Barnabas said, you know what? We left these cities so quickly. The, uh, we need to go back. We need to go back and, and, and support them. And so they did. They went back into the cities of persecution to support the young Christians and to support the young churches. For, for, the, for the young Christians, they, they encouraged them and they strengthened them in the faith. And for the young churches, they appointed elders to shepherd them and lead them well. What we see in this account is the Christians supporting Paul and Barnabas and Paul and Barnabas supporting the Christians. And we need to support one another as well so that we can stay on mission. Question for you. Who in your life is supporting you in your faith? Oh, how we need that. If you don't have anybody supporting you, you can send an email to me, Nate Obwin at valleybrookchurch.org. I'd love to connect you with somebody to walk with you, pray with you, disciple you, support you in your faith. But I have another question for you. Who are you supporting in their faith? You don't have to be an expert to support someone in their faith. You can pray for them. You can read the Bible with them. But we need to be thinking that way. We need to be thinking that way whether we can leave the house safely or not. We need to be thinking with that question, who can I support in the faith? Let me give you an encouraging testimony. I experienced that kind of support right here from you, Valley Brook Church. Earlier this year, I went on a mission trip along with one of our elders, and I got to tell you, I was overwhelmed by the amount of support. I had more funds than I needed to get there and back. <laughs> we, we had more um, uh, donations than we had room in our suitcase uh, to give when we were there. And, and, but not only that, we, when I was there, I, almost every day we had emails and texts and handwritten notes and envelopes to open up on certain days. Uh, and they, they had encouragement and prayers. I mean, it was just overwhelming the amount of support that I received from you. And I can tell you that that support helped us stay on mission how many of you have experienced that level of support here? Maybe not overseas mission, but maybe in life when you lose a loved one and people surround you and support you, say, hey, don't lose faith, keep going. Or as, as you're uh, uh, leading a small group or Bible study or reaching out to uh, a people who, who you're trying to share the, the gospel with and, and, and it's not going so well, and, and, but the people come around you and say, hey, don't give up, keep going. How many of you have experienced that support here? We need to support one another so that we can stay on mission. Just something that I, I just really, really, really want to say to the church right now in these days. It's, it's this. And I hope you can receive this with grace. Right now in the church, we can dare to disagree. But we have to do everything we can not to divide. We can dare to disagree. There's so many things to disagree about. But we have to do everything we can to not divide. What do you need to do to stay on mission? Number one, stay focused on the gospel. Number two, persevere in persecution. Number three, support others. And number four, and this will be brief, you need to pray and fast. Pray and fast. Our text today ends in verse 23, and it reads this way, Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting, with prayer and fasting, with prayer and fasting, committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. Those who stay on mission, pray on mission. 
Hey, kids, can you remember that? Those who stay on mission, pray on mission. If you go back to last week, the disciples began on mission by praying and fasting. And now this week, they stay on mission by praying and fasting. And the reason why is right here in the text. They put their trust in the Lord. They recognized that whatever God has to say is better than whatever they have to say. They, they recognized that God's ways are far higher than their ways. You, you see, prayer and fasting takes everything that we've talked about today and it brings it before God and it confesses, Lord, I can't do any of this on my own strength. I need you to accomplish this in my life. But it, it, it takes, and we're talking about it, and it goes before God and it says, like my body needs food to stay alive, so my soul needs you to stay on mission. I feel so weak, but yet I know you are so strong. Prayer and fasting also prevents us from being proud. It keeps us humble. It prevents us from flexing our spiritual muscles and going on mission, and it keeps us dependent upon God and prayer. And if I could kind of share my experience and in my life, I have seen a pretty direct correlation between prayer and fasting and being on mission. You see, when I'm in prayer, opportunities to be on mission, meaning opportunities to love God, love others, make disciples, opportunities to be on mission become more clear when I'm in prayer because in prayer, God is aligning his will with my heart. And then on the opposite side, when I'm on mission, my prayer life oftentimes increases because oh, I'm stepping out in faith. I'm trusting God. I, I'm putting myself in a position where I don't always know what the next move is and what's going to happen. And so I pray. If you feel like you've gotten off mission, would you consider fasting and praying today? Perhaps instead of eating lunch, you can take that time to pray instead of uh, eating food because you recognize your physical hunger. Perhaps you can fast and pray because you recognize your spiritual hunger. You can pray for God to help you get back on mission. Let us all stay on mission. I want to close with these two questions. You can uh, discuss these with somebody this afternoon to help you process and grow in the faith. First question is this. Are you staying on mission for God's kingdom right now? And if not, how can you get back on mission? Second question is, which of these do you need more of in your life? Focus on the gospel, perseverance and persecution, the support of others, prayer and fasting. And then whatever the answer is, you can take that to God in prayer and talk about it with somebody uh, this afternoon. And I hope that these questions help you to grow in your faith. Let's pray. Lord, we want to conclude our time right now by thanking you for the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross so that whoever believes in you can be made a son and daughter, adopted into your family, given the inheritance of eternal life. We thank you for the empty tomb that you are alive today. And because of that, Lord, may we pick up our cross and stay on mission for you. Give us the strength and the direction to do just that. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Peace be still. 
calm this soul I need you here now Restore my hope I confess I've been afraid Remind my heart, Lord Increase my faith So I will run into the waves As courage comes to take this place In perfect love In perfect love Oh, what can take away my Darkness can contain my hallelujah. Your cross has made a way for my hallelujah. My hallelujah. You give life, no man can take, no power. Separate, and who can stand against your might with armies of angels by my side? So I will run to the waves as courage comes to take this place in perfect love. In perfect Darkness will break, and I'll keep on singing your praise. Nothing can take my hallelujah. Nothing can take my hallelujah. Shadows will fade, and darkness will break, and I'll keep on singing your praise.
Hey, I want to thank everybody for joining us today on this Sunday morning. Uh, if you would take 30 seconds to fill out a connection form, we would so appreciate that. These connection forms enable us to know your prayer request and to take that next step in your spiritual journey with you. We're here for you, and we want to hear from you. Everybody, have a wonderful day. The questions for discussion are going to come up on the screen. You can press pause and, and discuss those questions. Enjoy. We'll see you next Sunday. 